Today, as I stand here, we don't really have our freedom because we are not actually practicing our rights. It's not that we don't have them. We still have the Constitution. Problem is we're not actually practicing it. We have millions of women marching the streets of this country asking for women's rights. When you ask them, what is that right you're lacking, they can't give you an answer because they're not lacking any right as a woman. I did. As a woman, I was considered a half a man, half a person. My testimony wouldn't be considered a testimony unless it was two of me if there was a man testifying against me. At age nine, I was a woman. Right there, children's rights don't even exist. Now, we could say, well, that's another country with different constitution, different law. You know, their problem. It's bad. We feel bad for them, but for their problem. And lucky you, you survived, you came here, you have your freedom. But here's the problem. People I ran from followed me here. They are right here. Now, why do I have a problem with that? Because they're not here to become me. They're not here to be proud American citizen. They are here to destroy our country, get rid of our constitution, and take away our freedom. And let me tell you why. This isn't because I had a couple of bad experiences with my daddy, no. Here's why. What is our very first amendment? Freedom of religion is the first clause of our first amendment. Under Islam, if you're not born a Muslim, or if you were born a Muslim and you left Islam, your punishment is death. Right there, freedom of religion don't exist. However, we are letting them practice their so-called religion where to their eyes, we don't have the right to not be a Muslim. What's the second clause of our First Amendment? Freedom of speech and the press. Under Sharia, if you say anything that is a disrespect to Allah, Muhammad, supreme leader of the country, punishable by death. Here's your freedom of speech. If you want to release an release a article, you have to go and get actual authorization to publish what you wrote. If it goes against anything of Sharia, you're not going to publish it. If you decide to break the rule and publish it, you can get, get up to seven years in prison for doing so. Our First Amendment. We can do what we're doing here, right? Peaceful. Under Sharia, you do not have the right to gather more than five people, only men. You cannot gather in one place talking about anything unless it's related to Sharia and approval of Sharia. Again, on the First Amendment, I have the right to petition the government, right? Under Sharia, you do not have the right to question Allah, Muhammad, or Sharia. If you do so, punishment is death. Right there, with one amendment, can anybody here tell me that we can coexist with Sharia? And don't take my word for it. Look it up. Read the Quran. Read the Hadith. Read the Sunnah. Look at the Constitution of Islamic countries. All of this is right there. In this country, based on our constitution, if you commit a crime, you have the right to a lawyer. Under Sharia, your lawyer can go to prison with you for defending you. Because if a lawyer is defending you, then he is agreeing with you. In this country, you have the right to speedy trial and a jury. Under Sharia, there is no jury, there is no trial. There is an imam who's going to sit there and judge you. And that imam will judge you based on Sharia again. If your punishment is already mentioned in Quran, okay. If not, if Muhammad faced such a situation, then good. 
If not, the Imam will put two and two together, compare notes of Quran and Muhammad's life, and will come up with a decision of what's your punishment.